So I'm from Tipperary, County Tipperary, the far side of the river that runs down the valley there. I get to look into Tipperary all day. It's a beautiful site. Uh, but uh, yeah, Tipperary is famous for hurling. Um, that's kind of it, really. Uh, a bit of Tipperary crystal, but we, we were always in the shade of Waterford crystal, really. Uh, so Tipperary is famous for hurling. So when I was growing up, I was part of a local hurling team. When I say part, I was barely part of a local hurling team. Um, it wasn't really my forte. Uh, I wasn't really good with the, with the, with the small ball, uh, or a big ball for that matter. Um, and so I was on a panel, and then there was just some local junior F uh, kind of championship thing going on, and uh, we ended up coming second. I was on the bench for the whole thing. And so we got our medals. And I remember getting the medal thinking, oh, that's, that's nice. But not really feeling like I'd earned it. You know what I mean? I didn't actually puck the ball. I mean, I didn't actually score anything, didn't defend anything, didn't really do anything. But I got this, I got this medal. And yeah, it, it's, it's at home. You know, you, I think we all have collections of medals and different awards and things we're after getting over the years. Uh, it's, there, it's there in a box somewhere, like, but it, it doesn't really mean much to me because I didn't feel like I, I, I earned or did anything for it. And you can imagine maybe other players even looking at me going, what's he doing getting a medal? He was effectively the water boy. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an interesting thing when we consider reward versus effort. <clears throat> reward versus effort. In our, our gospel today, uh, it, it almost seems a bit provocative that this landowner goes out and hires these men. It's at the beginning of the day. And if you're, you know, if you're working in the Holy Land or in Italy or any place where it's, it's a lot warmer than here, uh, working in the middle of the day is, is a tough job. We, we, we don't have a, a climate like that here. For us, we don't ha working at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon is absolutely fine. There's no problem. You're not going to get scalded. Uh, there, if you work at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're up into maybe mid-30s as regards heat. It's just absolutely exhausting. That's why they tend to start at 6 o'clock in the morning, take a break then from 12 until 3 or 4 in the afternoon, and then work again from 4 or 5 until maybe 8 so their, their, day, their timetable is very different to us in a way. Uh, these days, maybe back then they, they didn't have that luxury. So working through the day was t physically very, very draining. Okay, so they agree on one denarius a day. Now a denarius was a proper, was an official day's wages. That's, uh, so that's, that's what, that was what the agreement was and it was absolutely fair. Okay, so then men are hired then at different points throughout the day and then finally uh, one group comes and at the 11th hour and works just one hour. Now, the interesting thing here is that uh, when the landowner calls the bailiff to pay the men, he says deliberately, start with the men who were hired last. Now that means the guys who were hired first are going to see what the guys who were hired last are getting. Okay, so the guys who were hired last did one day's, one hour's work and in the cool of the evening. And they're given a denarius, a full denarius, so a full day's wages for one hour's work at a time of the day when it's actually quite comfortable to work. So you can imagine then the guys who came first would be expecting more. Now when they get there, they receive a, a full day's wages, again, exactly what was agreed, but it seems unfair. It seems unfair. Even though it's, it, it got what, what they were promised, there was no dishonesty. They got what they were promised, but it seems unfair. And I think the Lord is trying to make a point here that the Lord's mercy may indeed seem unfair. You can imagine if you were born, born into a family of faith and so you pray a rosary every day and go to Mass every weekend and then maybe when you have a little more time when you're retired or something, go to Mass every day. And maybe you even have a prayer meeting in your house and maybe you've organized pilgrimages to who knows where. And at the end of your life, when all is done, when the chips are down, what do you get? Well, you get heaven. You get God for all eternity. And if there's some young fellow out there living what appears to be, what appears to be, uh, a, a very pleasure-filled life, though behind the scenes that pleasure-filled life is often filled with regret and emptiness, but uh, at least on the surface, it looks fantastic. Partying all the time, blowing money left, right and centre, uh, just no responsibility, just living the life, uh, good job, business careers, working in a bank somewhere or something, right? and just lives a life completely without God. 
and then maybe then through the saintly efforts uh, of his good wife converts at the age of 75 and dies at 77. What does he get? So having lived a life far from God, but then at the end converts and converts sincerely and goes to confession, asks the Lord for forgiveness. So then the sins are actually forgiven. That's what confession does. It actually forgives the sins. So sins are actually gone. Now that person stands before God on the day of their judgment. If the, sin, if the sins are, 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 are actually removed and actually taken away and actually paid for by the Lord's grace, then that soul stands before the Lord pure. So the, you can live a life like that. Now hold on, we'll correct this. We'll, we'll adjust this in a second. I'm not encouraging people to live that kind of a lifestyle. But one could, in theory, or if, if one were to live a life like that and then convert at the end, after that sincere conversion, what do you get? You get heaven. You get God for all eternity. So Bridie McCarthy, who's been going to Mass and praying every single day of her life, and Johnny Ryan, who converts two years before his death at 77, both get heaven. Now that might seem unfair. It may well seem unfair. It, it does seem a bit unfair. But what do you want the Lord to do? The, Lord's, the, Lord, the measure of the Lord's love is to love without measure. If you had, you know, if you had children um, and one you know, was always the good boy, came home with his, with his homework done and good results and never a problem with the teachers, then there's the other fella who's getting report cards every second week because after setting furniture on fire again in school. Do you know what I mean? And, and he's breaking your heart and, and then at the end maybe he gets things together. But are you, but are you going to love them differently? Are you going to say, now, Johnny, you're my favorite, and you, on the other hand, whew, <laughs> you won't, like, because you love them both. Now, he may cause you a lot of headaches, but you love them both. And you want them both to know that you love them. And you want them also to know that you love them not because they have good results or not because they never get into trouble. You want them to know that you love them simply because they are your child. You love them because of who they are, not because of what they do the same way that we're supposed to love God because of who he is, not because of what he gives us. So, in the end of our lives, if, if, we, if we turn to the Lord in his mercy, we get heaven. We get God for all eternity. That may seem unfair. Now, this in no way is an encouragement then to live uh, a dissolute life, a life of sin, and then convert in the end for multiple reasons. One... <clears throat> We spoke about this um, la- last week or a while ago at the, about the, this thing called, this truth, this teaching of the church called the final judgment. <clears throat> so at the end of time, at the end of time, when all of time is over, so uh, the earth here, there will be no more people on it, there will be no more families, if you will. Uh, the, 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 the era, that, that time period where human beings live on the earth will be over. And we then, hopefully, from the perspective of heaven, will see the ultimate consequences of our lives. So the good I've done today, right, that affects people. But then those people affect other people. And those other people who are affected affect other people. Now, no one knows or everyone forgets or whatever it is that the actual origin of of this was was my action. Say, for example, you're a teacher and there's someone with low self-esteem, and you really build them up, you build them up, you build them up and to, to believe in themselves and to believe in God and to believe, believe in his grace. And because of that, then they start a beautiful family. And because of that, then they have wonderful children who go on to have children. Now, the origin was that good teacher who encouraged the child that day. Otherwise, he could have gone into the path of addiction and completely ruined the lives of those around him. But at the end of time, we will see the ultimate consequences of all the good we've done and the ultimate consequences of all the good we haven't done, so the sins of omission, and the ultimate consequences of our sins. It's a, it's a pretty astounding thought. So if you're in heaven, you're already in heaven, that's, that's great, but at the, at the moment you die, the consequences of your actions haven't actually occurred yet. They haven't happened yet. Because, you know, if I'll, I'll be gone in, what, 45 years, so 2066-ish, I'll be, a, I'll, be a, I'll be six foot under. But the effects of my life won't have finished then. They'll go on for another, who knows, 100, 200 years afterwards. 
hopefully, God willing. Uh, so imagine then knowing, even from the perspective of heaven, that I could have done more, that I, the Lord gave me 77 years, 80 years here on this planet, and I only used the last 10 minutes for him. What if I'd used all 80? If I'd used all 77, all 80 years for him? Now, I'm not saying we'll be up in heaven full of regret or shame, but we only have one shot at this. We only have one life. So I'm not saying for a second that we should try and live far from God. <laughs> Besides, like, sin is, a, sin is just a liar. Sin promises joy and it promises fulfillment, and it simply never delivers. So that lifestyle doesn't work anyway. It's not like we have loads of fun here and then convert at the end, and then we get heaven for all eternity. It, you know. You live that kind of a life here, it's a life of emptiness and misery because our heart is not just created for pleasure. It's not. And if we, if we think it is, it's just emptiness. It'll just be a life that leads to addiction. We're created for so much more. We're created for so much more. And secondly, of course, we do not know neither the day nor the hour. So if one were to say, live life up while you're young and then at the end convert and then you're sorted. Well, which one of us is going next? Do any of us really know? And what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if you think, yeah, yeah, I'll do the whole prayer thing at the end of my term, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Have you any idea when that's going to be though? Because if you're wrong, you might miss eternity. You might miss heaven. This, this, like the greatest reward, which does not end and which is in, a, in one way, the same for everyone, you might actually miss that. So it's, 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 it's never worth risking heaven. Simply never worth risking heaven. And interestingly, the road to hell is actually hell. And the road to heaven, while it may be difficult and arduous, and there may be crosses and suffering involved, the road to heaven is actually heaven. The road to heaven, while it may be difficult, if you're living a life of love, a life of self-giving, a life of self-sacrifice, it actually purifies you of your need to satisfy every pleasure and passion immediately. So you actually free yourself from yourself. Whereas the road to hell is actually filled with, with, with hellish steps. Just me, 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 me. And that just leaves you feeling empty. So, what the Lord offers us <clears throat> may seem unfair because it is simply so merciful that he offers the same heaven to every single person if they want it, if they want it, if they want his mercy, if they accept that gift of the Lord's mercy because the measure of the Lord's love is to love without measure. So we ask the Lord today, for a greater understanding of his merciful heart. Lord, you are not being unfair by giving everyone the same heaven. You give us all the grace, the strength, the abilities that we need today. So we pray that we will use them for your greater glory, to build up your kingdom and be an example to those around us that all might discover your merciful heart. Amen.